Welcome, Ram. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so looking forward to this panel tonight. I think it's going to be brilliant. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about Ernan. What yeah. do you guys do? Yeah, sure. Um, so at Ernan, we have an app that actually helps people keep track of their earnings in real time. And so as they work, they can see how much they've earned. And then if they want access to that money, they can cash out so they don't have to wait till payday. And when you cash out, the money is available instantly in your bank account. <coughs> um, wow. So if you have a bill due and it's not yet Friday, it's not yet payday, you don't have to take the late fee on the bill anymore. Um, you don't have to put on your car to get an overdraft fee. You just access your pay and then you um, can move on with your, with your life and not have to worry about these really expensive products. What? And I think the other piece that's really interesting is that we actually don't charge any fees or interest for this at all. Um, it's completely supported by voluntary payments from the community. So it's a community supported product. Wow. Um, and so it, it's got this feeling of a community of people coming together to help each other stay out of bad financial products. That's brilliant. It sounds fantastic. And hopefully the way things will go in the future, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, to be part of the community instead of uh, incumbents that stand over us. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's really interesting that this whole concept of like a periodic pay cycle is only a few centuries old. Prior to that, everybody used to be paid every day. And it was around the Industrial Revolution that companies started paying people with the delay. Uh -huh. And that just shows you how the balance of power has shifted. As an individual, I'd rather get paid before I work. A company would rather pay people after they work. The fact that we've all accepted that we should get paid two weeks after we work just shows you how much we've accepted that companies are far more important and powerful than individual people. What an incredible insight. Yes, it's true. Tell me, um, what's your, what do you see at the moment in the banking industry um, that, where there's problems and what needs to be changed? <clears throat> Apart from that, that one you just already Yeah, said. I mean, so, so the one about the periodic pay cycles is not so much like a banking industry thing. I say that's more like financial services, yes. but it's come up from the way companies run payroll, and so that's like a different part of it. I think within the banking area, you find that... Um, not all banks, but some banks, and you see this particularly with like overdraft fees, where the overdraft fees are really high. Um, they don't need to be that high, but they're high, and then banks have kind of got used to that profit. And quite often, um, it's the profit from the overdraft fees that subsidize the free checking accounts for others. And so in some ways, the financial system has become a really efficient way to create inequality. I mean, the financial system helps the people who have lots of money and then it exploits those who don't. It's a very two-faced financial system. Um, and so I think it'll be interesting to see how the resources of the few who control everything battle the sheer number of the people who are on the have-not side. And like, you kind of see some of that tussle in banking, but I think the bankers also realize that in the long run, you have to keep your customers happy. You can't only be exploiting your customers. And so you are beginning to see banks adapt to that as well. <laughs> We hope. <laughs> and um, what's your wish list or vision for the future in banking? What, what would you like to see happen? Um, so I think that today there's like a lot of barriers and protections in banking um, that make it tough for new things to come about. Um, examples are, as a bank, you have privileged access to lower cost deposits. As a bank, you have um, privileged access to the payment rails, whether it's Visa, MasterCard, or um, ACH. Um, there's no data mobility. Um, and we've been talking a lot about data access, and that's still being debated. But at some point, you're going to actually get to where it's not just data access, but you have like a full suite of APIs where it's not just the ability to read, but the ability to write as well. I think when you get to that, then there's much more competition and competition is good for consumer, but the industry doesn't always like competition. So there's, at this point, there's lots of like structures to protect the incumbents against competition, but hopefully over time um, that gets broken down. Yes, uh, and hopefully the FinTech community will help yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can't stop innovation, really. Mm -hmm. well, thank goodness. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it. And I think it's going to be a great panel. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.